J.A. Philadelphia, PA, what's the difference between Muslims not allowed to protest and a hadith that if you see it wrong, change with your hand? Like we explained before, we have the text and then we have the interpretation of the text. All right, the text and the interpretation of the text. So oftentimes there are other elements that have an effect on the interpretation of the text. And that's the core foundation of Madhab al-Salaf, the way of the Salaf. It's to t try our best to take it back to the most organic interpretation and physical application possible. Possible. Versus those who take later interpretations and later applications, right? So with regards to if a person made an argument about protesting and it's permissible and it's obligatory, there lies no doubt that person can find a plethora of verses and hadith to support his argument. An abundance of ayah, hadith, abundance. But a person, they'll come along and they say, this is from the non-Muslims, it's from the West, <clears throat> it's from khuruj al-imam, al-hakim, al-shari, wali al-amr, the salaf never did it, the sahaba never did it, so on and so on and so on and so forth. And they'll get out of that bombardment of those proofs and evidences with, it's not the proper understanding. <clears throat> So for every verse that you quote and every hadith that you cite, go back and see where is the ijma' of the salaf. That's what it means and that's what it doesn't mean. And if you can't find the ijma', then find the overwhelming majority. النقل المستفيد المشهور عنهم And if you can't find that, then you can't say what is and what isn't the way of the salaf concerning an issue or concerning the interpretation of a verse or a hadith. That's number one. Number two is the concept of, they say, revolting against the ruler disobeying the ruler even if he's a sinner is haram in the sunnah which it is and you can't go out and protest because that is bidayat al khuruj does that apply to america is there a muslim ruler is there islamic government is there islamic government in the world today this is a serious hardcore question to be asked is there a country that is constitution its bylaws the kitab and sunnah from beginning to end so on and so forth and we're not trying to get into that sticky discussion we're not making takfir on nobody. We're not saying no one's a kafir or a murtad or an apostle. Ahsanallahu alaykum, Ustadana. The final questioner asked, has asked the following Muslims are oppressed all over the world in places like Palestine by the Jews, Kashmir and India by the Hindus, and in Syria and places of the like in the Muslim world. We find that the Salafis never support the call to protest against the oppression or call for the boycott of certain products from these countries. Please, can you explain why the Salafis never stand up for, for justice against these oppressions? Barakallahu feekum. Naam. So, with regard to this question, of course, a very pertinent question for this era and these times, because of the fact that it is true, because the question, what the question has said is true, that the Muslims are being oppressed in the various parts of the world and that the Muslims are suffering at the hands of the unbelievers and at the hands of the enemies of Islam from the Rafida and from the Khawarij and from other than them. So when the, when the brother or the sister whoever asked the question that the Muslims are being oppressed in various places like Palestine and Kashmir and India and Syria and other places then this is true. This is Haq. The second part of the question, that the Salafis never support the call to protest. Now when you say the word protest, I assume what you intend by that is marching in the streets and demonstrating. I mean, there's a several ways of several directions that this question can be answered. And I'll maybe take one or two of those uh, aspects of those directions and deal with them. As for protesting and marching in the streets, then to protest in the streets does not have any evidence for it in the Kitab and the Sunnah. To protest and to march in the streets has no proof whatsoever. In joining the good and forbidding the evil, because this question is coming from the aspect of forbidding evil, forbidding evil and joining good is an act of ibadah. Prophet wasallam said, whomsoever from amongst you sees an evil, then let him stop it with his hand if he is not able then let him speak out against it with his tongue, with his speech. And if he is not able, then let him hate it, let him hate it with his heart. And that is the weakest of Iman. And in a narration, there is no Iman beyond that. So they say, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whomsoever sees an evil, let him stop it with his hand. So let us go and march 
and let him stop it with his speech. So let us go and shout in the streets. This act of ibadah, of enjoining good and forbidding evil, in the manner that they claim that the Salafi should do it, which is march out in the streets with them, requires a text. Where is the text from any hadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that they went out marching in the streets against the kuffar or against the Muslims or against the oppressors? Where's the proof? Were not the Muslims oppressed in Mecca? Did they go out marching in the streets when they were oppressed? Did they call for the downfall of Abu Jahl and Abu Sufyan, who was the, these were the heads in that time, and other than them? Did they call for their downfall, waving placards and conducting sit-ins in the Kaaba? Did the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ ever do that? If they did not do that as a form of forbidding evil, then why do you do it? If the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and they suffered oppression, under Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, and so did the Tabi'een. They suffered. Abdullah ibn Zubair, the Sahabi, radiallahu anhuma, he was killed by Hajjaj ibn Yusuf and crucified in Mecca. And the Kaaba was demolished. Yet none of the Sahaba, this is after the death of the Prophet sallallahu over 40 or 50 years after his death, or after the Hijrah rather. Yet, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum never demonstrated in the streets and they never protested. Why? Because this is not a legislated means of rectification. All this does is cause more upheaval. And if you want to see point and case and proof, then look at the Muslim world today. When they started their Arab Spring that they all celebrated, these Ahlul Bid'ah and the Takfiris and those so-called democratic you know as the democratic de groups of democracy within the muslim lands and ikhwan al-muflisin in egypt and in tunisia and in libya and in syria and in yemen look at those countries now where did your demonstration take you look what happened when they demonstrated in syria look at it today where did your demonstration get you? Quarter of a million or half a million dead? Several million refugees on the borders of Syria, in Saudi Arabia, in Jordan, in Turkey, throughout Europe, dispossessed, displaced, refugees suffering and dying, a generation uneducated, a generation who never went to Madrasa to learn Quran, a generation who never had the opportunity to learn the deen of Allah because you sparked something of bid'ah. Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala said, it amazes me that these people want to protest in the street to establish the sharia of Allah. Yet they claim to want to establish the sharia of Allah by imitating the kuffar, by demonstrating just as the kuffar demonstrate in their lands like the communists. And the Westerners, this is what Sheikh Al-Albani said. You wish to rectify Islam by imitating the kuffar in their sharia or in their qawaneen, in their principle and in their religion and in their constitutions? Where is the proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed you to demonstrate? You can't use general ayat and general hadith because the sahaba radiallahu anhum did not understand them like that. Which of the aimmatul arba that we spoke about just a few minutes ago, Abu Hanifa or Malik or Shafi'i or Ahmad ibn Hanbal, which of them commanded you to go and demonstrate in the streets? None of them. Where did this idea come from except it came from the kuffar from Europe and from China and from Russia and from the communists and from the Bolsheviks and from Beijing Square when they demonstrated in the early 90s and at the fall of the Berlin Wall and the demonstrations that you saw in London and across Europe so the Muslims looked at that and they said, we're going to do that in our lands. So they borrowed from the kuffar and they said, we're going to use their method to establish Islam. Look at the result. Look at the result. 
Why don't the Salafis support? You want the Salafis to support that murder and killing that resulted? Because Sheikh Al-Fawzan was asked, he said, don't demonstrate. Sheikh Abdullah Al-Bukhari was asked, he said, don't demonstrate. Sheikh Rabi was asked, he said, don't demonstrate. Sheikh Ubaid was asked, he said, don't demonstrate. Sheikh Abdul Muslim, he said, don't demonstrate. Because this is not from the methodology of the Sahaba. فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ عَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُثِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُثِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ Let those beware who oppose the command of the Messenger of Allah. That they, not be ob- that, that, uh, that, they may be ov- that they may be overtaken by a fitna, by a calamity, or that they may be punished with a severe punishment. This is what happens when you oppose the Messenger of Allah. Now the who, when these people are commanding, when they're sitting in their houses and they're sitting in their hotels or they're sitting in, in London or they're sitting in Paris or in Germany and, and they're sending out tweets and Facebook messages and WhatsApps telling the Egyptians to protest. So you sit in your homes and relax whilst the butcher and the baker and the car mechanic is marching in the street facing the bullets. And it is his children who are dying now. Look at the picture of Syria before the demonstrations and look at the pictures of Syria today. Look at the pictures of Libya before the demonstration. Look at the pictures of Libya today. Look where the demonstrations led them in Tunisia. Open the door for the people of Takfir. In every place, the only people who benefited from them is, is Ahlul Sharr. This is where your demonstrations lead you. Boycotting. Boycotting is not in your hands. The boycotting of the product from a particular land, from a particular people, is for the rulers to decide, not for you to decide. If the Muslim ruler and the scholars of a Muslim country who advise the Muslim ruler that such and such a product must be boycotted, or such and such a country should not be dealt with, then the Muslim ruler has the right to do that, like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, who since the inception of the state of the Jews, till this day, have had no diplomatic links with them and no business, link, business links with them. So the, so the Saudi Arabians are not allowed to deal with them anyway. But this is for the rulers, not for you sitting in, you know, wherever you're sitting in London or in Tobago or in Trinidad or wherever you're sitting or in Jamaica or in, in Washington DC or New York. You're sitting in your apartment flat and making fatawa that you can't buy these products and you can't shop in that supermarket. Who gave you the right of fatwa aslan? We mentioned who the right, who the, the right of fatwa is with who? It's with the ulama. And the ulama cannot pass a ruling upon all of the people for, for boycotting that affect the whole of the nation, what is allowed inside the nation, what is not allowed inside the nation. Except with the permission of the Muslim ruler. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not forbid trading with the enemy. In fact, there's a chapter heading in Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari, chapter heading, chapter buying and selling with the mushrikeen and with the enemies of war, Ahlul Harb. That's the chapter heading in Bukhari. In this chapter, there's a hadith. Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr said, we're with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When a tall pagan mushrik with, a, with long, matted, unkept hair came driving his sheep. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Are those sheep for sale or are they gifts? The pagan said, They are for sale. So the Prophet ﷺ bought one from him. Whose understanding is this? Bukhari. Look at the chapter heading of Bukhari. Buying and selling with the mushrikeen and with the enemies of war. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah mentioned, in his Fatul Bari, he said, having dealings and trading with the Kuffar is permissible, except that it is not permissible to sell to the enemies of war a product which can be used by them against the Muslims. In its permiss- and, and he mentions, in it is a permissibility in this hadith to buy the merchandise of the disbeliever and an affirmation that he owns what is in his hand and it is allowed to accept a gift from him. Sheikh Al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, mentioned likewise. When he was asked about what was printed in some of the newspapers, where, the, where some of the, the people who are agitated by these types of affairs and they have no understanding of the religion, they was printed that all US goods 
should be should be boycotted all U.S. goods on the basis that USA supports Israel, and it was claimed that this verdict was issued by the scholars, and the one who purchases these goods is a person who has committed major sins on the basis that the purchase of these goods aids the Jews in fighting and killing Muslims. So Sheikh answered Al Fawzan Hafidhullah Taala. He answered robustly, asking for proofs that such a verdict was issued by the true scholars. So he said that it is not true that such a fatwa was issued. The scholars have not issued such a verdict that the goods of the Americans cannot be purchased, and they have not ceased being purchased in the marketplaces of the Muslims. And the purchase of these goods cannot be prevented unless it is a command given by the Muslim ruler of a particular land. That in that land, so if the ruler issues such a command, forbidding the purchase of products or to boycott certain goods from certain countries of certain countries, then it is obligatory to obey that ruler because you are now obeying the ruler. As for individuals calling for these boycotts, issuing such fatwa in that regard, then it is not permitted for them. So this shows the ignorance. Sometimes, even in in my WhatsApp, and I'm sure many of you have seen it in your WhatsApps. Avoid and boycott all of the following, and they'll list maybe twenty, thirty supermarkets and high street stores and certain companies. Don't buy from them. Don't don't buy Coca Cola. Don't buy Fanta. Don't buy Sprite. Don't buy Seven Up. Don't buy Nescafe. Don't buy Nesquik. Don't buy Perrier water. Don't eat at McDonald's. Don't go to Marks and Spencer. Don't wear Calvin Klein. All of this kind of stuff. Well, I've seen it with my own eyes. Don't buy Timberland. Don't eat Nestle chocolates. Don't eat such and such. Don't eat such and such. Don't wear. Don't use shampoo from L'Oreal. Wallahi, I've got the I've got the WhatsApp on my phone, and they say that this is what we have decided. And don't sup. Even they said don't support a certain football team because their owners are something that they are. One of them is a Jew or something like this. Allahu Akbar. This is the foolishness that we see. From where are you issuing this fatwa? It is not for them to issue this fatwa. If those Muslims are being oppressed, then take the advice of Sheikh Al Bani, rahimahullah. Take the advice of Sheikh Ibn Ibn Baz. Take the advice of Sheikh Al Fawzan. In their lands, if they are suffering, then aid them. How do you aid them? Now that they are being oppressed, don't go and. Throw fl- throw fuel onto the fire. Aid them. Send them medical aid. Send them money, so they can rebuild their lives. Make du'a for them. Educate them. Advise those who are in other countries about to do the same thing. Don't do it. Don't be foolish. Look at what happened in Syria. Look what happened in Egypt. Look what happened in Tunisia. Look what happened in Iraq. Look what happened in Yemen. Don't follow their path. If you are thinking about that in that country, then fear for your children. Don't slaughter your own children with your own hands. Make du'a for the rulers. Rectify your societies. Study the Deen of Allah. Rectify your aqida. Stop sinning. Avoid the major sins. Stop fornicating. Stop listening to music. Pray your five daily prayers. Study Kitab al-Tawheed. Learn your aqida. Allah will give you victory. It is not in your hands; it is in the hands of Allah. Work righteous deeds. Follow the Sunnah. Abandon bid'ah. Leave the innovated groups. Follow the path of the Salaf. Follow Dawa to Salafia. Ida tabayyatun bil ina. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "When you start partaking in in interest transactions, and you hold on to the tails of cattle." And you become satisfied with the cultivation of the earth, and you abandon jihad in the path of Allah. Then Allah's humiliation will come down upon you, and Allah will not remove your humiliation up until you return back to your deen. What did Allah say? Return back to deen. Yes, He said. Allah's message said, "Return back to deen." Hatta tarjiu ila dinikum. Up until you return back to your religion, return back to your religion, and Allah will give you victory. Allah will remove it, remove the humiliation when the Muslims sin, 
And when they partake in sinful acts, imitate the kuffar, throw fuel unto the fire, rebel against the Muslim ruler because they see him as an oppressor. Don't rebel against the rulers, even if they are oppressors. Prophet ﷺ forbade rebelling against the rulers, marching against the rulers. All of this is forbidden. He even forbade you from speaking out against them. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you see something from your ruler that you hate from him, then do not speak about it publicly. He's commanding you. You want to follow it or you want to follow your desires? If you see something from your ruler that you hate, then do not make that public. I didn't say it. The Prophet ﷺ said it in this hadith sahih. You don't like it? That's why I said, don't take from Ahlul Bida. Because Ahlul Bida will take from their aql or they will take from their hawa. Take from their intellect. Because, oh, this hadith doesn't make any sense. How can that be? So, khalas, follow your aql and abandon the, abandon the rasul. If that's what you want. Or they say, no, no, I can't because my emotions won't let me follow this hadith. Don't follow it then. Follow your hawa and abandon Rasulullah. But don't claim that you are working for Islam. Because you are not working for Islam. Prophet ﷺ said, if you see something from your ruler that you hate, do not make that public. When they asked Usama bin Zayd to speak against Uthman, he said, me speak against Uthman, I will not open a door that wasn't opened before me. If I advise him, I will advise him privately. When there is none but me and, me and him alone, I will not speak against him publicly because I don't want to open a door that was not opened before me. Usama bin Zayd telling you, that the door of speaking against the rulers publicly was never opened before him. And that was when Uthman was the Khalifa. What do you mean we don't stand up for oppression? You are the oppressors who march in the streets. You oppress the other Muslims and you oppress the rulers and you oppress the Sunnah and you oppress yourselves. Why are you saying that the, why are you saying that the Salafis are the oppressors? Because we don't go out marching? This is justice not to go out marching. When fitna comes, stay in your homes. If you had stayed in your homes in Syria, if you had stayed in your homes in Egypt, if you had stayed in your homes in Tunisia, in Iraq and in other places, in Yemen, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have given you better. Allahu a'lam. Now you have an opportunity to learn from that. Why don't the Salafis, why don't the Salafis, why... Follow the Salafis and you wouldn't be in the mess. Stick to the way of the Salafis and you would not have been in the mess that you find yourselves in today. Look at the look at ISIS. Look at those Khawarij. Look at the Rafida Shia. All of them rejoicing that the Muslim Ummah is burning. The nations of Islam are falling apart and they're rejoicing. The Kuffar are rejoicing on top of that because the Kuffar put them there. The Kuffar are happy with ISIS. The Kuffar put them there. And the Kuffar are happy with the turmoil in the Muslim lands. You don't remember what the Kuffar were screaming for? When the demonstration started in Egypt and in Tunisia and in Syria. They were screaming for it. Let them march. Let them demonstrate. Let us bring democracy. What democracy have you got? You've got demonocracy. Subhanallah. The shayateen came and they spoiled everything. The manhaj, the methodology of success lies in tasfiya and tarbiya. When the Muslim ummah begins to realize that, when Al-Albani used to say that to them 50 years ago, when he told the Palestinians manhaj of tasfiya and tarbiya, not the manhaj of throwing stones at tanks. Not this way. Tasfiya and tarbiya. Just like when the Muslims were being oppressed in Mecca. Tasfiya and tarbiya. And Allah gave them a way out. And Allah gave them victory after victory after victory. Not because they were throwing stones. Not because they were waving placards. Because they were worshipping Allah, doing righteous deeds, calling to the da'wah, calling to tawheed, call inviting people to Islam, cultivating their children upon that, strengthening themselves. And Allah opened the door for them. Such that within a hundred years of Rasulullah, the Muslims were walking in the streets of Spain. 
Within a hundred years from the desert, they were walking in Western Europe. Tasfiyah and Tarbiyah. Purification and cultivation. Purification of the religion from falsehood and innovation and shirk and kufr and alien practices. And cultivate the generations upon the cultivation of the Sahaba. Worshipping Allah, keeping away from sins, uniting our communities upon the haqq. This is my answer to that question. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.